If you've ever taken a photography class in high school or, well, anywhere that involved actual black and white film, black and white enlarging, you know, using enlargers and tanks and liquids and trays and all that kind of stuff, you'll remember that brightness and contrast were the two primary ways to make an image brighter or darker or snappier or less snappy, so on and so forth. Photoshop has a similar function to that to make an image brighter or less bright, more contrasty or less contrasty. It's under image adjustments, brightness, contrast. It's right there at the very top. And when you use this, it basically, you can make the thing really bright. You can make it really not bright. Uh, you can make it very contrasty. You can make it not contrasty. Now, you can, um, you can use this. However, if you'll notice when I make it brighter, it makes everything bright. And in this case of the picture, I pretty much want to make the mountains brighter, but I want to leave the snow alone. And so the drawback with brightness contrast is that it's, it just does too much. It affects the entire picture. As a friend of mine says, it's kind of like taking out a splinter with a hatchet. You know, it's a little harsh. So generally speaking, though brightness contrast is there, you want to, you want to avoid using it. So I leave that for the very last, if ever. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And I'm going to mention that one of our goals with pictures, you know, in print or electronic media, and I guess it's more of a rule of thumb than a goal, is that you want your highlights or your whites to have detail. In other words, you want them to have a little bit of tone. You never want them to be just totally blown out. And likewise, on the opposite end, you want your shadows pretty much always to have some detail also. You never want a shadow to be like just totally black with no detail. So within Photoshop, to achieve those two goals, we have a couple of primary functions. One is image adjustments and levels. The other one is curves. Now, we're going to talk about both of these and how they work. Um, and again, the preface is that brightness contrast sits on top here up in the menu, but avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. To get to all of these, again, you go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, or Command L, or Command M for curves. Let's start with Levels. I'm going to click on that. And what we get here, here's one of the note-taking things I mentioned you should do, is that we have what we call a histogram. This is a histogram. And a histogram is the visual display of data within a photograph. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is, in fact, you might recall another video a ways back where I talked about bits and bytes, and there's eight bits to a byte, so on and so forth. And they all have R, G, and B to make up a color pixel. Well, what the levels adjustment does is it visually displays the density or the collection or the how much of the dark RGB pixels you have. That would be over here on the left-hand side. Or you might want to say it's also the zero values. Then you also have the far right-hand side, which is the brighter or the highest value, which is 255. Now here's a little bit of trivia for you. Actually, it's not trivia, it's fact. How many values are there in here? Well, it says 255, but the truth is there's 256 because zero is a value. That's important to remember. You might recall way back when I talked about how everything needs to be a multiple of eight. This is where that comes into play. So 256 is your total number of values here. Now, back to our histogram in general. If you look at this, you can see that um, we have these sliders here. Moving these sliders back and forth gives us the ability to say, well, what's going to do is redistribute the data to take advantage of the full spectrum available to us. Within this histogram, we have our zero point, we have our 255 point. But when we look at the data here, you can see that 
all of this white data doesn't get all the way up to 255. It stops somewhere around, oh, I don't know, 236, 237. I'm going to go ahead and move this slider down here. And you can see that the picture lightens up a little bit. It actually changes. I'll turn my mouse thing off here for a second. You can see that when I uncheck preview, you can see that I, I, I made the picture a little bit brighter by moving the slider down. The white snow still looks white, so I still have detail. The dark shadows are basically the same still. So all that is good. When I click OK, and then go back in to look and see what I've done, let's hope it's good. Uh, you can see now, okay, here's all this data in the histogram redistributed to take advantage of the full 256 values available to it. Think of it as driving on a freeway. We've got four lanes of the freeway. One of the lanes isn't being used, so it's congested. If we open up that fourth lane, uh, which is the equivalent of using these higher values, actually using them because they're available, you know, we just get a better image. So we've done levels for that and it's arguably made the picture better. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay. Now we also have the Oh, what's the other adjustment? Curves. That's what I was saying. So we have image adjustment curves. Now curves is basically the same thing, but it looks a little bit different. We've got our zero values down here in the bottom left and our 255 values up here in the top right. Now, what makes curves different is that we can just take this bar and move it up and down and we can do some pretty dramatic changes. But what's really cool with this adjustment is that you can set anchor points. So let's just say in this picture, you know, I was talking about making, we want to open up the shadows in the mountains. I can set an anchor point. Oh, maybe say right here. We know this is all the dark data. I can set an anchor point here and open up just that dark area. You can see I'm making the mountains a little bit lighter. Ooh, that's not very good. But as I do that, I can also bring back my highlights. So I'm kind of, adjusting just that area in the back. So arguably again, you know, you can, you can see an improvement in the shadow detail here when I toggle on and off on preview over here. Uh, so curves gives you more control. Now this is really kind of handy because, you know, nobody creates pictures perfectly. Well, actually some people do, but the truth is, you know, you, you always hear the phrase, hey, let's fix it in Photoshop later. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's a lot of times you have to, but you never want that as a plan because all you're doing is creating more work. Anyway, that's a different discussion. When you need to make adjustments, curves is a great tool to do it. Another reason is that in both levels and curves and other programs, you can save your presets. So here I have, I've done curves. Now I'm going to make this a little bit wacky for the sake of demonstration. Let's just say I wanted to simulate what an acid trip looked like maybe in somewhere in the sixties. Now I of course am pure and clean and never, ever, ever did that, which is true. I never did that. Uh, but nonetheless, here is a kind of a whacked out image adjustment on this. I'm going to click on this little gear up here and I'm going to save that as a preset and I'll call this, uh, let's call it Mars. I can name it. I'm just going to click save, click okay. And you know, okay. So let's just say I shot 300 pictures of say the faculty and we all did headshots. Let's just say that the photographer, Robert Husky, who's a great guy, let's just say he made a mistake and had to make an adjustment to every single picture rather than go into every picture, he can save this preset and then maybe open up a different picture. Oh, let's see, let's open, well, let's look at Jason Kendall. We'll just do this for a second. Come on, Jason, open up. There we go. Now, it, with Jason Kendall open, this is our next lab, by the way, but with his image open, I can come up to image adjustments, curves, and I can now load that preset and there it is. I'm going to click OK and boom, there I have. He's on acid. No, I didn't say that. No, he is. Um, we applied the same effect to another picture. 
anyway, hopefully, hopefully you can see that I'm what I'm angling at is that you can streamline your workflow by saving your presets. I'm going to close that picture and not save it. And by saving your presets and curves, you can make things consistent throughout an entire package of work. Back to the top of this whole concept is that we never really want to overdo it. You want to make subtle changes. You want to make changes that are intended for specific purposes, like not making your whites too white, your blacks too black. By the way, over here in the top right corner, these three little things stacked up. This is your history panel. I call this the forgiveness panel because you can go back and undo what you did before. Now, Command Z, we're all pretty familiar with, but Command Z is only one step at a time. Now, the history panel, can, you can go back multiple steps. That's really kind of cool. Wouldn't that be great in a life if you can undo things that you did like three years ago? Ha. All right, but again, that's a distraction. Nonetheless, here we have uh, that panel. We've been able to save our presets. We have the levels and curves adjustments. And generally speaking, that's how we prepare a picture for reproduction, sometimes on the web, sometimes in print. But again, the rule of thumb is detail in your highlights, detail in your shadows. Levels and curves are the way to do it. Brightness and contrast is your last resort. Avoid that like the plague. If you have to do it, do it. Next up, I think we're going to talk about selections, about how to select an area so that you can make or apply curve and level adjustments to just that area. That's next. We'll see you there.